Hi again. Today we're going to talk about the Articles of Confederation, and this is the first formal government that the United States functioned under. So the three main ideas that we have to discuss today are why were the Articles of Confederation created, why was it created with such little power to enforce, and then of course did it have any strengths. So the Articles of Confederation were the first American Constitution, and it was created during the Second Continental Congress. Second Continental Congress met between 1775 and 1789. The Articles were ratified in 1781. The Articles also created a confederal type of government, and from previous video casts, we know that this means that the states in America worked together to make and enforce laws. However, those states retained their individual sovereignty. So the Articles created a limited um, government that also created a League of Friendship. Congress was unicameral, meaning one house, and each state received one vote regardless of their population. However, each state could send up to seven people to make that one vote. Um, the central or national government did not have a permanent executive. Instead, Congress served as the permanent um, body of power at the national level. So why what were the Articles created in this way? Well, the Founders and the American people were really fearful of having a concentrated amount of power in the hands of an executive. And this really stems from past experiences with Great Britain and with the monarchs of Great Britain, who would give them a lot of power to do self-rule, but then took it away from them, and so the rela relationship had changed. And that comes from our video cast prior to this one. And so, why was a limited government created? Well, remember, establishes a firm league of friendship. This was to combat and soothe people's fears of a strong executive and a strong national government. Laws only needed 9 of 13 votes to go into effect. But for the Articles to be ratified, or for an amendment to be passed, which an amendment is you know, a fundamental change to the Constitution, all states had to unanimously agree. And this was really to ensure that the national government wouldn't step on the toes of the states or the American citizens. This was to ensure that states were able to limit the power of any executive or any national government. So then, why no permanent executive? Again, Americans were fearful of a strong central government and a strong executive. To them, a strong central government or a strong permanent executive were representative of Great Britain's parliament and monarch, and they wanted to stay away from those ideas as much as possible. They didn't want anything that was reminiscent of that, and so they didn't create a permanent executive, and they created a congress that um, was permanent but didn't have as large of a voice as maybe the state congresses did. So then why didn't they give Congress enforcement powers? Well, this was again to ensure that states retained their individual sovereignty. As a confederal nation, each state wanted to have their um, own ability to create laws that were needed for their own individual states. Sovereignty means freedom from external control. And so just because they wanted to keep this sovereignty didn't mean that they didn't see the benefits of working together for common purposes or for military protection or economic benefits. They did want to band together to be able to win the war against Great Britain, for example, or to um, reap benefits of economic prosperity. But they wanted to ensure that they could do what was best for their own individual citizens as well. So here were some of the powers that were granted to the federal government. Um, they could declare war and make peace. They could establish an army and navy. They could print and borrow money. And so Congress, those, you know, 13 representatives from 13 states, this is what they could do. Now here's what they couldn't do. While they could um, create an army, create a navy, they couldn't raise funds for it because they couldn't tax the states. Um, they also had no way to control trade among the states either. So it was up to the states to fund the army and navy. So if they didn't see um, a need to do that, they didn't have to do that. So the colonists didn't like about the, start the slide over. So really what this slide is showing is um, what the American colonists didn't like about the British and how that affected what was 
put into the Articles of Confederation. So, for example, they did not like that the British had a large central government, i.e. the monarchy, that had all of the power. So, the Articles of Confederation didn't have a permanent executive. States didn't have to follow the laws and treaties that the federal government created. Um, American, co er, American citizens didn't like that all of the power was in the king's hand. So they ensured that the Articles of Confederation didn't have a permanent executive branch or a permanent court system. The American, colon er, American citizens also didn't like that the king could change rules or laws at any time. So the Articles of Confederation ensured that amendments required all 13 states to pass. So were there any strengths to the Articles of Confederation? Well, yes, of course there were. Clearly, the Revolutionary War was fought and won under the Articles, and the Northwest Ordinance was passed. So let's talk a little bit about the Northwest Ordinance. It was passed in 1787, and it serves as an inspiration to setting future territories, or settling future territories in the United States. What happened was an argument developed when the articles were being written about what to do with land claims um, that some states on the eastern seaboard had in the west. These quote-unquote landed states wanted to keep land as a way to build their own revenue and build their own power base. However, non-landed states wanted this land to be um, pooled in a collective um, mass and then be sold to pay off war debt that um, America had incurred during the Revolutionary War. Compromise was that the land would be, you know, pooled together, then sectioned off, and sold to American citizens. So this would pay off debt, but then some of the land would be kept for government and education purposes. It was also sectioned off into five distinct territories that would later become five states. It was also um, made clear at what point these territories could apply for statehood and that they would apply on an equal footing rather than, you know, a junior state. All right, so you should be able to answer the, these two questions, you know, why, was, why were the articles created with such little power, and what were the articles' strengths by now? If you do want more information, look at the following pages in your textbook, and don't forget to submit your summary and your questions. Have a great day.